Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this time I thought I'd do maybe a different video. Uh, I got a bunch of arcade games, you know, that I buy and restore and all that sort of thing. I figured, hey, maybe let's uh, talk about one of them, show you what it's all about, and um, play it a little bit. And the one in particular I have in mind is Super Pac-Man. The reason is, for whatever reason, it's not very popular, but I think it's such a good game, especially in a home environment. Because in a home, you don't want a game, I don't, well, at least for me, I don't want a game that you sit there and you just play for like an hour or two hours. I like those quick challenges. So sort of like games like Gauntlet, you know, are better in your arcade because it forces you to put in quarters. But at home, it's kind of like, what's the point in a way? I mean, unless you have a party scenario, but I mean, for, your, you know, playing a game yourself, you can just sit there and play it forever. Whereas a game like Super Pac-Man is really hard, really fast, and you pretty much have a 5-10 minute game. So I figured, why don't I show that game today? Let's go on downstairs and take a look at it. So right here, we got my Super Pac-Man machine. This one is uh, an interesting one, not a very popular Pac-Man game for whatever reason. You know, everyone loves Miss Pac-Man and, you know, Junior Pac-Man has its following and all that. But Super Pac-Man apparently was never very popular. Uh, it's actually one of my favorites. Miss Pac-Man is my favorite. This is probably my second favorite with Junior Pac-Man very close behind. Uh, they're probably both equally fun to me, really. Uh, this one in particular, I actually did not restore myself. I mean, I do restore games. I've kind of been dabbling in that for only about a year, really. I'm still learning. Uh, if I find a project machine, I pick it up and restore it and do all that. But... Sometimes I just still buy games ready, you know, already restored for me. This is one of those examples. Uh, this particular one I got from TNT Amusements. Uh, how long have I had this for? Well, just a few months, I think. I bought a bunch of games from them, you know, pretty happy with them. So I figured I'd just kind of show off the game a little bit, show you what they've done to it, and then maybe we have a game of it. So let me just grab the camera and show you basically what we got here. So let's uh, raise this up a little bit. So, I mean, TNT overall does great work. They're, the main negative, I would say, for them is now because of the YouTube channel, they're so busy with work that, you know, it takes a while to get games. I can't remember how long it took me to get this one, but it was definitely a few months. But the net result, you know, I'm very happy with. We'll show the side right here. Something I'm particular, very particular of personally, I mean, not everyone is the same on this, is having kind of the correct side art uh, and in this case being painted on and not just like a sticker i know you can get stickers for these and do it easily but that's not how this game originally was and it's not how i like it i prefer it to be the original side art and of course because these are kind of scuffed up over time they're going to need either touch up or re-stenciling in this case they got their guy who does the re the touch-ups you know and if you look close you can see the touch-ups and all that but overall as far as you know matching paint and doing all that and not going over the lines they did a really good job i mean this side art looks to my eyeballs this looks really really nice the other side is exactly the same, equally complete. They did a beautiful job on this. And when it comes to the cabinet, I mean, they did a few other things. I'll show in the back, which I kind of like. They painted it all around that same blue color, which I like, because it makes it look very clean. So that's pretty cool. And they keep little things like this. They keep you know, the little tags, which I like, and it's pretty cool. I'll come around the front. Same thing here, it's got that same paint. I'm gonna have to switch real wide here. Nice and clean once again. And even the coin door area. Let's get down in there. You know, proper midway coin door. That white button they had is a uh, coin, up, coin button. Uh, there's some games that have a free play mode, some don't. So for this one, they have a, a free play mode button. I don't mind, because I want all my games to be on free play. And that's easy to patch up if you really had to get rid of it. Even the art down there is perfect. And I am a fan of alternate team molding. And you can see here they went with yellow, which I think is just perfect for this game. To me, it looks great. And the controls are pretty good. And likewise, the monitor is pretty good. There's very little bit of burn, but not too bad. Overall, I'm super happy with this game. They did a great job. If I were to nitpick, I mean, there's always something you're gonna nitpick. I can feel around here, there's a hole. You know, there was a previous hole in the control panel. They didn't fill it. Doesn't seem like it got filled. You can feel a little indentation over here, but you know, otherwise everything's clean. The buttons look new. Joystick just looks like the original. Uh, it's pretty good. So this game, as you can see, is really different from the other Pac-Man games. Maybe that's why it wasn't very popular. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to hold this thing upright because I can't quite get a better good view of it. And I'm going to close my light here. Very different than the other Pac-Man games. There's actually not a whole lot of dots to pick up. You just have, it's easily fruits or shoes or apples or donuts or all these various things you gotta pick up and munch. There's not very many of them. The, the maze is relatively sparse. 
wait for this thing to get out of the attract mode. But you can see the basics of it. It's got the same old get the power pill, eat the ghosts, you know, uh, that all the Pac-Man game have. But it has the super pill, which makes you big. And that's the key to this game, because you use that for speed to help clear the maze. It's part of the strategy. And the only mod I've actually done on this one, I mean, I got it from them all restored. You can see it's, it's already got my high score up there of 124,000, uh, pardon me, 126,470. I added a high score kit to this game. That's my best score yet. Uh, that's the only mod I did because I like to keep my high score saved. So you can see here, there's really not a lot to this maze. You have doors to go through that have that are locked keys open the doors or you can smash through them if you're in big mode. So it's, it's, it's so different. I can sort of understand why people didn't like it because it is a very fast moving game. I mean, when you play junior, it's very, junior pack, it's very slow and methodical and you're, you have to sit there and guide the ghosts around. You know, Miss Pac-Man's kind of the same, pretty slow play. This one is just fast. You're tearing through mazes really, really quick, uh, which makes it different. But uh, to me, it makes it fun. So, you know, on that note, why don't we just go ahead and have a game? I'll see if I can beat my high score there of 126,000. I kind of doubt it, but hey, what the hell? Let's give it a shot. Okay, before we get to the gameplay, I figured why don't I just pop the back off and show the inside of the machine as well. That way it's not going to be completely documented. So I slid it out a bit. Actually, this lets you see the right side as well. You can see that side, or left side, whatever, depending on your orientation. That side, the cider is just as good as the other side. So let's come around back here and I'll set up the tripod. Right here somewhere. I think that'll do. Okay, and these are the basic innards. Actually, we'll start at the top here. So it's got some of the original tags. And we'll zoom in there. So you can see like the tag way up top. SUPM upright, Super Pac-Man upright. What if that's number, it says 10752. I wonder if they made that many of them, so I guess it maybe didn't do too bad. It still has all the original option tags. That's for all the dip switches and then volume control location and stuff like that. And here the monitor. I honestly don't know what type of monitor it is. Because this one I bought restored. I didn't restore it myself. I didn't, never even looked. And usually the label, you got to look way off to the back there to find it. So I don't know offhand which monitor this is. Okay, now let's set up the tripod. All right. So take a look at the innards. So. You can't see the mod I did for the high score save, but these are the two Pac-Man boards and that mod goes on the rear board. So in order to install that mod, that NVRAM, unfortunately I had to take these two boards out, which means then taking off this bracket here, top bracket, take the boards out, separate them, install the NVRAM, kind of a pain in the ass, put it all back. But it works, so I'm pretty happy with that. Otherwise, these are pretty much stock boards. I didn't really do anything to them at all since I bought this one restored. And over here, it has a switching power supply. I think TNT likes to do that in many other games nowadays. I'm going to assume it didn't come with one originally. To be honest, I don't know for sure. But I'm going to guess it did not. And I suppose part of the reason is I see like a couple of other little screw holes there. One, two, three, four. So it looks like something else used to be mounted in the back there. The original power supply. But they tend to like to replace them with switching power supplies because they're more reliable. So it looks like this power brick down here, if you follow the lines, well, here, let's rotate it. You can see AC kind of goes into this power brick, and then AC comes out and kind of follows along these, it splits two ways. These ones go all the way upstairs to the marquee, and that other line goes right there and just feeds AC to the switching power supply. And that thing provides whatever the voltage are that needed. Typically five volts, but I suppose we can take a look and see. Yeah, there's five volts, for example. It's kind of cool. They put a little custom connector here and stuff like that, which is neat. Because if this ever dies, it's very easy for me to replace it. Other than that, this is all untouched. Okay, I definitely know for sure the power supply is not used now. And the reason I just I just saw something down there on the power brick. Let's zoom in. There are no fuses. <laughs> all the fuse blocks are empty. So yeah, it looks like this thing is barely doing much at all aside from just passing AC. I wonder if it could be even completely bypassed. I mean, here's the AC that comes in. It could probably hook right to that to that power switcher right there. And the power brick at the bottom removed completely, I suspect. But I'll just leave it as is. This is probably a more reliable setup anyways. Um, 
Other than that, that's the basics of it. You can see the coin door way in the front there. And where they added, right over there, they added the little free play button. And this looks to be, yeah, here's another off of the AC line before it feeds the switching power supply. They also got a little connector here. This most likely feeds AC to the, to the monitor. So it looks like AC from that lower brick. They got some wires going up for the marquee, a couple of wires going to the monitor, and then the rest go to the power supply. And this guy handles the game board and all that. And the game board looks nice and clean. Yeah, other than that, I mean, I did my usual. I changed the, the legs to Teflon legs. I always do that. And I put this high speed, uh, high score save kit. Other than that, this game is completely as TNT delivered it to me. And there it is one more time. So I'm going to slide it back into place there. And now we can get to the gameplay. Okay, I got the camera all set up. It's kind of tough to find a good position for the camera because I need to be able to you know, see the screen, but also I got to be able to play the game. I think this will do. All right, high score is 126,470. I'm going to give this a shot. I kind of have two basic, well, three basic strategies, I suppose. On this one, you typically get, uh, you do three mazes, then you get a bonus uh, level, three mazes, another bonus level, and so on. For the first three mazes, I just kind of uh, try to get, immediately get the power pills, at least the big ones, and clear out those big, the, the gated walls as soon as I can, uh, just to collect points, because those are worth points, actually, even knocking through the gates. For the second set of three, I try to grab the keys first and clear out as much of the maze as I can before I touch the super pills. And then for after that, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't really have a whole lot of strategy. I just try to survive. So I'm still trying to get good at this game, but 126,470. Let's, let's coin it up. Let's just see what we can do. On camera, no pressure. You see, to start with, I just kind of get the keys, just kind of clean, clean house a little bit. Open up some pathways. So that's kind of cleared out most of the maze. Now it gives you some time to kind of go after the ghosts. And hopefully get all four quickly enough that I can then get another pill, like so. Okay, that wasn't well done, but... If you can time it so that they're all inside the ghost house... Okay, I didn't do that one very well, but... We'll do, we, we'll do what we can here. Come here. Two, three, four. Nope. Oh, 11,000. Decent. Same kind of strategy for this one. I clear a chunk of the maze right away. Getting rid of those locked doors is also, just so you know, risk the chance of me getting trapped later. Now we can start going after the ghosts. God, the AI is tough on these guys. 20,000 decent, let me get that. Well, I guess that was okay. Sorry, it's after every two mazes? God, I forget. Yeah, every third maze, I forget, is a bonus. So you get two mazes, then a bonus. The bonus have a pattern that gets me something like 8,400 or something like that. I'm sure everyone has their own pattern for this, but this is kind of what I use. Oh, 8,200. I kind of lucked that I got the slot machine fruit there. I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. The timing has to be kind of perfect for that. Here I change a little bit my style. I'm going to try to get keys. I don't take the super pills yet. I'm trying to unlock as much as I can, clear up some of these pathways, so that when I do get the big super pill, I'm not wasting time on these pathways. Once I've done that a little bit, now I can go ahead and get this and munch some of these guys. Smash through some gates, get another one. Clear out some area here. And then I'm just left with the top. So I'm gonna grab another super pill. Clear out these. And now we go for them. Oh, 
There, that was good. That's what I like to get, because they're all near the ghost house, and then you can kind of snap them all up. But you gotta get out of there quick. There we go. That's the basic strategy I use until the next bonus stage comes along. Oh, sometimes that red guy gets in the way. I'm going to continue. I'm going to try to clear up at least this little area. That's probably as good as I'm going to get. Can I get it in time? No. Let's try the little slot machine. Yeah, well, that's always a crapshoot. Some of the old things apply. Definitely get them through the tunnels to slow them down. Okay, this is cleaned up pretty nice. I want to get that top part. And I'm actually going to just go for it without the big guy. Oh god, this is close. Oh, I'm going to try it again. I'm not going to get it. God, this game gets tough really fast. with a big pill and munch all right time for the big one again might as well clean out the tunnels and try to get some of these guys no oh, greedy greed will always get you in this game I'm in a bad spot here. Okay. Whew. I don't like having stuff left at the top. If I can avoid it. I'm gonna have no, none of the big pills left. The super pills. Alright, bonus. Same pattern. Yeah, 8400 is the typical I get for that pattern. And after this point, it's kind of a free-for-all. I don't really have a strategy beyond this, to be honest. I'll try to clear up some of the areas, but the keys start opening doors that are not necessarily next to anywhere near the gates. So it becomes a bit of a mess. I gotta get a super pill quick. Nope, not gonna happen. Okay, I gotta get a big pill. At this point, I gotta start clearing stuff out. Ah, boom. There we go. Whoa, oh, die by the brain ghost. Slow them down through the tunnel. They also slow, slow down in the middle of the board there. Oh no, no, no. Should have a pill left. Wow, I almost completely screwed that one up. <laughs> I forgot I had a pill left. Yeah, it starts to get really hard now. Just trying to unlock everything I can before I use those big pills. Dang it, didn't get any. Ooh, 
No! I actually had that, but I kind of screwed up my play there. You know, let's clear this area out. Be done with it. Yes, this game becomes impossibly hard really, really fast. I gotta somehow get that. You know what? I don't even know how I can get it. Forget it. I'm gonna die. I think I would have died if I tried going for that power pill, so to heck with it. I messed up the joystick control, but 99,450, a decent score. Didn't even get on my high score table though. <laughs> and that's uh, that's Super Pac-Man. So let's head up back to the office. And that, my friends, was Super Pac-Man. It's such a good Pac-Man game. I don't know why it wasn't popular back in the day. Perhaps it was just too different from the original Pac-Man formula, which I guess it kind of was. But for a modern day, you know, home environment, uh, I think it's great. The cabinet art is really like pretty crazy. You know, the cabinet style is unique with the big cutout for the mouth. Very punchy colors. The gameplay is just fast and quick and difficult. Uh, good stuff. I highly recommend it. If you've never played it before, give it a shot. It takes some time to get used to it and let it grow on you because it does play very, very different from the other Pac-Man games. But strongly recommend it. Anyways, that'll wrap up this video. Hope you found that interesting. I mean, if there's some interest in these kind of videos, I'll do more of them. I've got some other arcade games. Uh, around here at my, and at my film house and even some pinball machines too we can do the same kind of thing with those but you know let me know thanks again and we'll catch you all next time bye bye